come to Sunday school. May God bless us today in Jesus' name. Um, this morning, we'll be treating the topic which says family. The topic of our lesson this morning is family. And the objective for this lesson is for us to know how we can dedicate our families to God. Our key verse is found in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And it says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's say it together, everyone. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Our primary text is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. Um, today is Mother's Day, so permit me to focus more on the mothers today. So if there's any contribution, if there's a mother raising his or her hand, we'll take the mothers first. We only take from, other, from the fathers if no, mother has, if no mother has her hand up. So our Bible reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 30, verse 10 to 31. Volunteers, please. Proverbs 31, from verse 10. Yes, ma'am. Can find a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Twelve. She shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Amen. 13. She seeketh wool and fast and walketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. 15. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. Amen. Sixteen, she considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. Seventeen, she guided her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Amen. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the, the staff. 20. She strengtheth out her hand to the, the poor. She, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Thank you, ma. Another mother, please. From 21. Yes, it's a pearl. Go ahead, ma'am. Proverbs 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Mm -hmm. 22. She maketh herself coverings of, step, of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth giddles unto the merchants. 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, Amen. her husband also, and he praiseth her. 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. 31, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. Thank you very much. I will take the supplemental scriptures as we go ahead. Uh, this morning, our lesson will be looking at uh, three central themes. One, the value of a mother. Then two, we we'll talk about how to dedicate a family to God. Then number three, we we'll talk about the benefit of having a family dedicated to God. So this morning, before we even talk about godly mothers, that's what we are going to focus on this morning, godly mothers. 
But let us talk about mothers in general. How do we value a mother? Uh, I will start from an exercise that was done in the answer class. They said to value a mother. Let's, let's check if our mothers, if they are to collect money for the things they do at home, how much do we have to pay them? Let's just think about it. For instance, I'll just ask random questions. Um, Sister Faith, if you are to be paid for all the cleaning you do in the house for a year, how much do you want to collect? I don't think I can actually price it. No, you don't need to price it. Just say, okay, how much you want to collect only for cleaning? This negotiation, we want to pay you. How much do you want to collect a year? Uh, 400,000. 400,000. Yeah. Thank you. Let, let's keep that. Um, Sister Pell, how much do you collect for going grocery shopping in a year? My time is very valuable. Maybe a million. <laughs> ah, okay. A million. That's 1.4 million. Okay. Sister Alice, how much do you collect for, for cooking the meal for the family? A year. <laughs> it's so sorry. Well, I, I cook every day. It's so difficult yeah. to put value on it. How much we want to collect for a year? How per year. How much you want to pay me? I want to pay you. How much you want to pay me? Say how much you want. I don't know. Maybe how much you want to pay me? Six hundred thousand. It says. Okay, we are two million already. So uh, let's ask Sister Mary. How much? How much will you take for your grandkids? You take them to school every day. How much will you want to charge for a year? Huh. If you are to pay you. Uh, I know God is the reward you. I know, but if we were to pay you, how much will you want to collect? If you have to pay me, I will collect about hundred thousand. Thank you. We are two point one already. So I, I want to stop here because of time. But if, if, if you can see, by this, just for this tax, and this is not the only things they do, apart from the ones we've mentioned, they do the dishes, they go grocery shopping, it's, it's like they wash the clothes, they take the kids to bed. These are things. If, we are, if for, from the ones they've priced so far, we're about 2.1 million. And I doubt if any, any father here collects up to 2.1 million a year. I don't know. But if, if, let's assume you even get 2 million a year, and you pay 2.1 million to the mother, what happens to the, to the rest of the things? So we can see it's, it's re, they are re, what they do in the family is really invaluable. And now let's go to the ones that we cannot put price on. Yeah. How much can you pay your mother for the prayer she says on your behalf every day? How much can you quantify the lack of sleep she had when you were little, when you are sick? You can't quantify sleep because I don't think they pay anybody to sleep in this world. But she gave up her sleep for you, for me. Can we quantify that? Even if you have all the money in this world and you can hire people to do all the chores for you, you can't pay someone to give you the love of a mother. And you know the love of a mother, no matter what the child has done, no matter how bad the child will be, the mother will still love the child and pray and hope that this child will turn back to God. This child will turn back to be a good person. That you cannot value. May God help us that we appreciate the mothers God has given us. Amen. Especially the mothers we have as Christians, as Christian mothers. Their value goes beyond what they do in the house. There are things you do not even see. I think uh, one, of, one of our brothers, Sebra Leke, used to say, when he has gone out, when he comes back, he will meet the mother praying for him. There's no way you can value that. Amen. And I, I saw, there's a video on YouTube. Uh, it says the, the most difficult job in the world. And that world, they just put it as advert, like a social experiment. They put out an advert that they're looking for an operations manager. And for the operations manager, they say you have to have three degrees. You have to have a degree in medicine. You have to have a degree in finance. And you have to have a degree in cooking, culinary. And for all these... You have to work 24-7. There's no break. There's no holidays. And the, mo the most interesting thing, you are, not be you are not going to be paid for this job. 
And that is what mothers do. They do a lot, but don't get paid. As children, what we can do, the least we can do, is to love them, appreciate them, and pray for them. May God help us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So, that opener is just to give us an understanding that no matter what we do, we cannot pay our parents. No matter what we achieve, no matter what we give them, the comfort we give them, we cannot repay them for the love they've give, given us up to this point. Now, we'll focus on our, on, our, on our Bible text for this morning. It talks about a virtuous woman. And when we say a virtuous woman, we say a godly woman, a woman who has been saved. Now, we, we've read about characteristics of that woman. Can we mention some? What you can remember that was said about the virtuous woman? Yes, Sister Alice, man. Thank you, man. She has the fear of God. Another person? Yes, ma'am. She's faithful to uh, her husband. Thank you. She's faithful to her husband. Yes, I need more hands. We talked about it. We read about a lot of uh, characteristics of that woman. Working and industrious, we see that there are so many instances of her not um, her bread not going out at night. She working willingly with her hands, seeking wool and flax, going far away to seek merchant ships, you know, just to make profit for the family. So she's hard working and industrious. Thank you. She's hard working, and these are the characteristics we've said about a virtuous woman. These are the characteristics we find in godly women. They do all these. Firstly, because of the love of God that is in their hearts. And secondly, for the love they have for their families. And that's what, it, it, this ties back to what we are looking at, the value of a mother. Now, if you look at this world, currently, people of the world, what they are, they are into instant gratification, self-fulfillment. That's how we have mothers that will go out, go out in the morning and never look back what's happening at home. We read in the news of mothers who are who are into infidelity. Things we as in unspeakable things we, we read in the news about women and mothers. But for godly women, you will not read that. Even if they have to, when they have to leave the home to provide to subsi, to subsidize the no not subsidize to complement the income of the husband or even to provide for the family, when they are how they are doing that, their mind is at home. Probably they will be, be praying in their heart. Oh. God, my child is in school. Take care of him. As they are working, they'll be thinking, oh, what will my child have for dinner? What will my husband have for dinner? These are things that women do. These are godly women, what they do. But in, in, in the world, it's not so. For those of us that God has given godly mothers, we need to thank God for them. Because the love and the care we get from them is not the same as is in the world. We talk about their hard working. Um, this, 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 this holds true in a lot of places. You see probably the, the couple have gone out for the day to, to go to their place of work. When they come back, probably the husband will say, oh, let me sit and rest a bit. But immediately the wife will be thinking, I need to start supper. Even if the husband will go to join her in the kitchen later, it will be the woman that will first go, oh, I need to get something ready for the family to eat. They are not lazy. And those are the mothers God has given us. May God please keep them for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, one part of the, of, the, of the text we read talked about she takes care of her maids. They are maids to help her. In the society we have today, I don't think any of us have maids at home. Then it falls on we, the husband, the men, the children, to help these our mothers so we don't overwhelm them with work. May God help us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we've talked about various characteristics of a mother. Which is the most valuable characteristics that we can think of from this uh, Bible text? We've talked about a lot of attributes for this godly mother. Which one is the most valuable of them all? Yes, my sister Debbie. I saw your sister Faith. Good. Thank you, ma. The fear of the Lord is... Is the most valuable. Sister Faith, can you tell us why the fear of the Lord is, is the most valuable? That is actually what we influence are to do the right thing at the right time. Yes, 
thank you. And can somebody expatiate for us when we say the fear of the Lord? Can we say it under what does it mean to fear the Lord? What does it mean to fear the, the Lord? Brother Fee. Uh, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Thank you. So I think once you have wisdom, then all things come, I can say, naturally to thank do you. the right thing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. That's Job twenty twenty eight says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil, that is understanding. And also it tells us in Proverbs 8.13, it says, um, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Those are the fear of the Lord. And it's, uh, when we talk about the fear of the Lord, it's, it, it, I want us to look at it. It's not that the fear that will be punished, but the fear not to go against what God has commanded to do, what God wants to be done. We should, it's the kind of fear that the woman has, ah, I must not go against the will of God. I must not go against the commandment of God. I must do what God wants me to, to do in this situation, in every situation. That is the kind of fear that a virtuous woman has. May God help our mothers to always have this fear in their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've talked about virtuous, uh, a virtuous woman. But in a family, we don't have only the woman. We have the woman, the husband, the children, the whole household. So dedicate the family to God is, is not the function of only the mothers. The scripture gave particular um, instructions on what fathers should do. So can somebody tell us what one of the things the father should do? Any volunteer? OK, let, let's, let's switch to the, to the father a little bit. Can any father tell me, what does the Bible expect a father to do? OK, uh, brother, OK, OK, brother, Toby. Um, we as fathers kind of set the pace in the home in terms of the spiritual temperature in the home. You know, we lead, you know, in terms of family worship and family devotions. And like um, the key verse we have, it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So we kind of set that temperature and provide the leading within the household. Thank you. Abratafi, can you read for Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 to 7? It reads, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thank you, sir. So that verse tells us, there, there, are, there are two things I want us to take from, from that verse. That verse 5 tells, The father should love the Lord. That is the first thing that is expected of the father. He himself should love the Lord. He himself should be saved. He himself should have personal relationship with God. That is the beginning. And if you go to verse 7 of, of that uh, Deuteronomy 6, it talks about, apart from loving God, we are supposed to teach the children the way of the Lord. Deuteronomy 4 9 says, Only take it to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thy hearts have seen, and lest it depart from thy heart all, the, all thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So it's, it's, God, it's like generational. You yourself, you know God. But apart from knowing God, you're supposed to teach them to your children. And when your children have children, you teach them to your children's children. That means you teach them to the generation following you and generation following them. If you do it that way, and your son takes up the, the mantle and teach his own children, and his children's children, then it continues. The statue of the Lord continues in the family. That's why you see, you see families where generations after generation, they serve God. Because one person has taken it upon himself to teach his children and his children's children. And if, it, you know, uh, the Bible tells that bring up a child in the way that he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. If you, as a father, you've made it a point that in the family we read the Bible, in the family we pray, in the family we do what God has commanded. When your son grows up, that's the way he has been taught. He too will go down that path 
and teach it to, to his child, and the child will teach it to his or her own children. And that is how lineages continue to serve God. May God please make us Christian fathers to be able to teach our children and our children's children when the time comes. Apart from teaching them the word of God, what else should a father do? What else should a father do? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll give a... Okay, Sister Pearl. Um, an another thing a father should do should be to provide for his household to ensure that they have all the um, physical necessities of life. Thank you, ma. So, the father should provide for the children. When we talk of provision, it's, um, we are talking now both physically and spiritually. We talk about the spiritual provision at the beginning. Now we are talking about the physical provision. Clothes, food, shelter. In this society, education is part of the basic things that children need. A father should provide. The Bible tells us that a person that doesn't provide for his family is worse than an infidel. So we should provide for our families. And God will help us. That means the father himself, we've talked about the woman being hardworking, going far like the merchant sheep to bring into the household to provide for the family. The father too should provide, I see your hand, man. The father too should provide, for, should go out to get things for the family. The father should not say, oh, my wife is hardworking. She's making money. I can just sit down. She does everything. Okay, she brought money for food. She brought money for gas. She's paying the mortgage. Well, I can just sit down. That is not the, the attitude of a Christian father. As fathers, we should go out to work. May God help us to provide for our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Florence, I saw your hand, man. Even though the father, the, you know, goes out to work and whatever, that, man, that father should have time to spend with the family or with his children. Because I could remember, and it's a lesson too, like my, one of my sons, like he goes out. So when you ask, uh, he goes, it's at work, it's at work. And I told my son, I said, you know what? This work, work, work. You better find something to do. Because your son, when I ask, it's at work, it's at work. Make time, spend more time with them. And he leaves me. In the morning, he sees them. Afternoon, and before, even if he has to go back to work, before they go to bed, he will have time f for them. So the father too should have time. Because when you don't have time for your children to spend time with them, they will, when something happens, they won't come to you. The same thing with women. If, if there's something in, 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 in especially a guest and, you know, and women, if there's something in their heart, and as a woman, and as a mother, and your child cannot come to talk to you about her life or his life, then something is wrong. You better find more to have more relationship. So may God help us. Amen. So both father and mother must have time. And for me, we, we mothers, we have more time. That's why the father will say, oh, they, they love their mother more than, more than, more than uh, their dad. Not so, but the father too must have time, must be closer to their children too, and God will help all of us. Amen. Thank you, ma. That brings us to the next point that we, are, we actually have. The father and the mother should bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So it's not only enough to provide food, to provide clothes. You might, you might buy them the best clothes you can find in stores. You might feed them the best food that, that there is available. But what value are you instilling in the children? That's why the Bible says we should bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. When I'm saying the nurture of the Lord, it means we should teach them the way of the Lord. We should teach them the instructions of the Lord. We should let them know, don't see it, the Lord. And it starts from, from little things. Like Sister Florence mentioned, do we have time for our children? Starting from little things like, like their kivas, do we teach them their kivas? If a song has been assigned to them to learn in their Sunday school, 
Do we take time out to teach them? Or just tell them, your key verse is in uh, Joshua 24, 15. Go and learn it. Do we take time to sit down with the children? Recite the key verse. Beyond reciting the key verse, can we give them context to it? Can we relate it to what happens around them? Do we tell them to recite it every time? And it goes a long way too. If you're trying to teach them their key verse, I say, when well, I recite the key verse, the child doesn't know it. And I say, for you, to, for you to tell the child, you now open the Bible. Be saying after me. You, the father as well, you should learn it. So when you tell, the, tell them, recite your key verse, if the child does it, um, um, start reciting it by heart. The child will know it's possible to learn it by heart. It's not, you, you, you should not be a parent that will say, do as I said, but not as I do. When you, when you say, daddy, what's your own key verse? And I say, okay, my own key verse is in uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me, no. When you ask, what's your key verse? I say, oh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. And I ask you, what's your own? And I say, um, I've forgotten. And I start for him. Children, they say, oh, yeah, children, that's how it should be. Spend time to, with them. Bring them up in the way of the Lord. Apart from uh, things like key verse and song, how else can we bring them up in the way of the Lord? Pastor Randy. Key verse and song. So pray with them. It's, uh, it's very important. And I remember that when, uh, we, uh, when I was young and my mom start, uh, uh, started coming to church and uh, she she got saved and then uh, bringing us to Sunday school and she would sit with with me and my sister who is older than me and uh, she'll teach us how to pray and and uh, and, and that's uh, that's very important for for parents to to instill that in the heart of the children the prayer because prayer is is our communication uh, with, uh, to God so uh, and uh, everything that we want to ask God that we, we do it in prayer so that's one I mean, thank you, sir. We need to pray with them as well. Because the, the way we, we let them see the world is the way they, they will believe the world is. If you tell a child, let us pray, you can, say, you can just pray. But let the child know that things that they get is by prayers. For instance, if your child asks, oh, daddy, I need probably, I need a new school bag. I just tell the child, no problem, tomorrow we'll go to the store to buy it. The child will just feel, well, anytime I need something, my, my, my father will, will provide for it. But if, if they ask, say, ah, I need to buy a school, new school bag, say, go and pray that God should provide money for your daddy to buy a new school bag. So the next time you come up to ask you for something, ask you, have you prayed about it? You probably say no. Being a child, you tell, go and pray. If you come back another two times and you tell him, go and pray, you see that by after a, a, a while down the line, you come and ask you for something. You say, have you prayed to God about it? You say, I have prayed. You say, then trust God. Little by little, we let them take baby steps to knowing how to relate with God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Another thing that fathers ought to do, apart from, or is part of not trying them in the word of the Lord, is to bring the children to church. And it's a, it becomes a bit tricky when they get to teenage years. When they are young, probably they are five, six, it's easy to get them ready to go to church. But when it gets to teenage years, it, bec it starts becoming dicey if the child is not saved. Because then you will be thinking, I can do something else with my time. But is, is it time for us to put markers that in my house, you go to church? Me growing up, the only thing that will make you not go to church is if you cannot physically get to church. By God's grace, growing up, we had, we had a car that takes us around. If it's possible for them to dress you and carry you into that car, you get to church. If you are weak and you can't walk into the church, there are speakers in the car park. You'll be in the car, you hear, you'll be in church. Then we, we, don't, we don't have... Um, we didn't have the luxury of uh, online church. So we have to be in church then. So to hear the word of God, we have to be in church. And the parents then, I, I know of a few parents, it's, it's a no-no that I say probably, eh, I'm feeling a little bit tired. I can't go to church today. You get to church. So as much as possible, 
we should get them to church while under our roof. It becomes a bit dicey when the child has left home, probably is in college, or probably is living on, on his or her own. He can decide to make his own rule. But if we've, we've built it in them that from childhood you go to church every Sunday, it will take a lot for that child to just stop going to church all of a sudden when you leave home. May God help us in Jesus' name. I will talk about these things, that these are the things fathers should do. A quick question is, are these duties for the fathers alone? Yes, Sister Alice. Why do you, why do you say no? teaching their children in the way of the Lord. Not only the, the fathers, they should both be doing it. Okay. They should both be doing it. it, it this, these things, although the Bible said the father should do it, but we remember in the beginning, God created woman as an helpmate for the man. We need to help the man as well. Probably you can say, oh, it's the father's uh, responsibility to teach them their Maybe they are song or they are keepers. But the father has gone to work. He's not yet back from office and it's time for the children to go to bed. Should the man just say, well, their father is not around. They, they can go to bed. He will try it another day. No. The mother too should take, should, should take up that part. However, that does not mean the father should not lead those things. Like Brad Toby said, we set the tone at home. But the mother should be there to help. There are times probably the father is engaged in something else. The mother should take up the button and help these children in the way of the Lord. May God help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we've talked about what the father should do and what the mother should do. But the Bible has enjoined children. There are two things children should do. Brademi, do you know those two things? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? We've talked about what the father should do and what the mother should do. God has instructed that children should do two things at home. What are those two things? Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, I can't hear you clearly. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's one. And the, the other one is tied to honor your father and your mother. Yeah, okay, obey. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's obedience, yeah. Obedience in general. So there are, those are two instructions given to the children. The first one is honor thy father and thy mother. And it comes with a promise. Brother, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you, know, do you know the promise? And you shall grow in strength and wisdom of the Lord. No, is it that, that thy days might be long upon the, the earth that the Lord has given thee. So, living long is tied to obeying God's word. And it's, um, if, you, if, you, if you look at it, in days gone by, children are more obedient to their parents. I don't know for a certain fact, but could that be the reason why people in the earlier generation live longer than those of us now. I, I, can't, I don't know the relation. But I'm just saying, the Bible has said, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days might be long. And you know, God's word, this one comes with a promise. There are people, even if they're not Christians, if they honor their father and their, mother, and their mother, God will keep to his word. We, we as human beings, we can change, but God never changes. So, God has told us, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long. So, what does it take to honor thy father and thy mother? Sister Pell, can you help us? How do we honor our fathers and mothers? So, first of all, just like they have mentioned, obeying them when they give instructions, especially those of them that are in the faith, that will not lead us astray. We should obey, do what they ask us to do. I think in, in, one, in the lesson, they gave a very beautiful illustration of a, a young boy who went out with his friend, and then the mother asked him to come home and... Um, he returned home even when his friend invited him to play football. So that just tells us that sometimes it may be inconvenient or we may not understand why our parents ask us to do certain things. But we, by honoring them or by obeying them, it shows that we trust that um, they, they know what's best for us and they have our interests at heart. Thank you very much. And she, she has tied the two together. Honoring them has to start with obeying them. But we'll come back to obedience. But when you say honor, honoring them, how do you relate with your parents? Probably, is your parent talk to you and say, um, I'm on the phone or something. Probably you are talking to your friend or your, or your mother is talking to you. 
Do you tell your mother to wait or you tell your friends to wait? Who do you give the preference to? These are little things that, that make honor. Where I come from, when an adult is talking, he's talking to you, probably chiding you for doing something wrong. You listen. Even if you have something to say, let the adult finish saying what he or she has to say. The response is, say, ah, sir, can I explain myself? Not that your mother will say, no, 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 mom doesn't have no, 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 mom, mom. That's not to honor your parents. Honor is something that, that comes from a place of a, a, a place of submission, if I can use that word. We should honor our parents. Yes, Sister Noma. We have to show our respect for them. Thank you, Ma. We Thank you, ma. We need to show respect to them when they are old. Because when, when the person grows old, the new things of life, we're not, we're not, our things that we are doing currently, is not how they did things during their own time. You need to be respectful in explaining changes to them. Probably I'm looking at myself, probably in some, in some years time, time down the line, probably there will be new technology that I myself I don't know about, and my children are telling me, how would they tell me? You say, Daddy, why don't you know these things? Would that be a way to tell me? You say, ah, no, Daddy, this is how we do this thing now. Or this is how this, this one works. It might take time for your father or mother to, to understand. Just go through it a little at a time. Show them honor. Don't put them down. Probably you are somewhere and uh, you feel this place and with my colleagues, if my mother comes in here, I'll be ashamed. It should not be so. Honor them. They are a place of honor. If you, are, if, you are, if, you are, if you have people in your house and you are, you are probably having a feast or something, let your mother sit in a place of honor. You won't tell your mother, ah, my colleagues are around, we are, we are using the dining room, go and sit down in the kitchen. Yes, yes, sir, Pastor Andy. Actually, also, you know, we give honor for, for our parents and uh, uh, things that we, you know, something that they can be proud of. You know, and not only inside the house, and not only when we are in front of our parents or mothers or fathers, we we do also give honor to them by us doing good things outside of the house, things that uh, they'll find out. You know, don't put them in embarrassment, and that's uh, that's very important. You know, it's uh, you know I I uh, I remember when I I uh, was a young boy and I gave my mother an embarrassment, and I I tell you I could I I couldn't forget that that day and uh, since then I, I tried to to be a better uh, boy you know a better person because I don't want them to to hear or learn from somebody that I I am not a you know I'm not I am who, who I am that I say I, I am right so yeah. thank you sir so we'll, we'll quickly move on to obedience because of our time obedience means we've talked about we are we are talking about godly parents now they will they will do lead us astray our parents give us instruction, but these instructions should we obey when we are children? Let me let me let me ask the question another way. Probably you are a father now. You have children who should obey you. You are a grown. You are the head of your family. You, do you still need to obey your own parents? But I hope. I, I know you are a father. Do you still need to obey because you are the head of the family? Yes, we have to obey them. Uh, I think, um, like you said, from my, from my area, there's an adage that says, no matter how um, worthy a child is to acquire clothes or the pieces of clothes that you have, you can't have as many rags as the elders. Meaning that what the elders see sitting down, you can't even see standing. So that wisdom that has come with age as they've grown is still there for them to guide us, and I believe we must definitely obey them. Thank you, sir. It means as children, we never grow old to a point that we are exempted from obeying our parents. Uh, Nana is here. May God, may God keep her for us. Our daughter sitting in front, Sister Noma, she's old enough to be my mother. But I will still expect that when Nana gives her instruction, she should obey because that's what the Bible says we should do. So we never outgrow obeying our parents. May God please give us the heart to always obey. And quickly to close the class, we talk about the benefit of having one minute, man. We talk about the benefit of having a family dedicated to God. Uh, before we go into that, Sister Florence, quickly, man. One, one thing we should know that 
when we obey or we honor our, our parents, our children or their children too, we honor them. There's, a, you know, in short word, there's one, one man who was given, in, in a story, who was given uh, his parents food in, a, in this mud uh, plate. The children saw, saw him, and then he was going, and then when he got, grow old, the children put the food in that mud plate and give it to their father because they, they saw him doing it to his own parents. So what goes, if you t train your children, if you, they obey you and you know, their children too, they will do the same thing. That's why God will help us. Amen. So that our generation will be generation that we say, okay, we follow the, 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 the Lord. So we have to obey our parents. So our children too have to obey. Whatever you, you plant, that's what we, we, you, we, you, you, you will get. You cannot plant a mango and, and uh, be expecting a guava. Amen. Okay, Sister Mary, in one minute, ma. It's true. We should teach our to even our sons, our daughters, that we have. Because when we are doing something to our mothers and our parents, they see us. I always tell my children like that that all these things I'm doing to my parents, you are going to do it to me. When I do it to me, you are going to do it to your children. There's a certain time, my son that I'm living with, when I asked him something, he shattered on me. You know? But the, the little girl, her daughter, his daughter, came and called me and said, Grandma, is this not your son? I said, yes. He said, why is this shattering on me? I said, Pray for your father. Amen. He went and met his father. I said, is it not your mommy? He said, why are you shouting on her? So my son called me secretly and said, please, grandma, I'm sorry. So we should do the right thing at the right time. Amen. To tell, uh, to do anything at the presence of our children. Amen. We should be very careful. Amen. To do anything because what we do, they will do it back for us. Amen. Thank you, oh, Sister Debbie. That will be the last contribution before we close. We are already past time. Uh, our children, they are our children. Yes, ma'am. But we too should discipline them with love. We should not be too harsh to them. Whenever they do wrong, we call them. We explain to them what they have done, that it is wrong. We should not always be too harsh to our children. That's what I want. Thank you, ma'am. And... Uh, I think that's taken from Ephesians 6 4. He said, provoke not to your children to wrath. It doesn't say we should not discipline them, but we should not provoke them to wrath. When a child has done something wrong, if you are to, if you are to discipline the child, let the child know, I'm going to discipline you for doing this or for doing this. In my family growing up, there are rules. And if you violate one of the rules, you'll be told, in this family, we have this rule. You violated it. You'll be disciplined. And uh, my, my dad, before disciplining you, when, when you know he's going to discipline you, he will tell you to go and bring the cane and bring the Bible. So when you, when you come with the Bible, he will, he will tell you to read some part of the scripture to let you know what you've done is against the word of God before he beats you. That, that's how I grew up. May God help us in Jesus' name. The benefit of having a family where everybody does what God wants them to do is that the family will be happy they will be united, and their prayers will be answered. So close, in, in Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. May God bless us all this morning. That is the end of our lesson. All right, Wally, let's all stand up and a uh, short prayer. Sir Paul, if you can please. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this wonderful lesson yes, we have learned on family.
Father, you have spoken to everyone. You have spoken to the fathers, to the mothers, to the children. Father, the grace to be doers of your word and not just hearers. Please give to us in the name of Jesus. As we go on our knees to speak with you, Father, we pray, oh God, that you will help us in the name of Jesus, to be open to you in the name of Jesus. Could there be any way that we are we have made mistakes in the past and we have done wrongly? Father, we ask, oh God, for your mercy today in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we pray, oh God, that you help us such that our lives will be pleased in your sight in the name of Jesus. Our families will bring glory to your holy name in the name of Jesus. And Father, King of Kings, will make you our Father proud of us here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. We're going to start our uh, devotional service in a short uh, while, so we can kneel down. In- Fire as.